morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the New York Community Center for Spiritual Living. Today we have our Thanksgiving celebration. I want to say thank you to those of you who have brought things in and to those of you who have not brought things in. It's okay because it's all good. It is all good. Just thank you for being here, and I'm expressing my gratitude to each and every one of you. We continue with that theme of gratitude today, and we're going to have a wonderful program for you. We will have a treatment. We will have all kinds of refreshments. Barbara's back at the hospitality table doing a wonderful job for all of the people so that you will have an incredible celebration today. That is our intention for the day. So welcome, everyone. And it is also our intention that when you leave here today, you will feel much better than when you came in. And now we're going to have, today we have our meditation. I'm going to be doing the meditation for you, and we're going to have a treatment and a reading, and then we're going to have a lesson from our own wonderful Fanny Munlin, who is our licensed practitioner. She is doing the wonderful talk today, and we're also having the class after the celebration, Shortcut to a Miracle. So, having said all of that, it is now time to welcome one of our newer practitioners. He's our licensed practitioner, Donald Wayne. He's going to do the treatment for us this morning. So please help me welcome Donald Wayne. Good morning. In keeping with the theme, as Reverend Rutter just pointed out, gratitude, I'm proud to be a practitioner here to offer this treatment this morning. I wanted to begin with Ernest Holmes, who, in, from the Science of Mind, who is our founder and the author, as you know, of Science of Mind, pointed out very pointedly, I think, that gratitude is one of the chief graces of human existence and is crowned in heaven with a consciousness of unity. Indeed, greatness is gratitude, and gratitude is greatness. So will you join with me now in a spiritual mind treatment. If you would like to remove everything from your lap to be more comfortable. And you might find it even more comfortable. Close your eyes if you like. We'll take a deep breath. I recognize that there's one power, one source, and that source is God. Omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. Now, in quiet contemplation, I give thanks for my knowledge of God as the one and all encompassing intelligence. I give thanks for my recognition that I am one with this presence and that the abundance of the universe is always at my disposal. Everywhere I look, I find reasons to express joy and gratitude. I see spirit expressing itself in an endless variety of ways, through my health, through my prosperity and wealth, through loving relationships, and creative expression. As health, my body is healthy and vibrant my mind is always about life-affirming ideas, and I give thanks for this miraculous body, this vehicle that serves me so beautifully on this plane of experience. I support this with ideas of good nutrition, constructive thoughts, 
treatment and activities that keep me moving and motivated and active. I know only divine circulation, assimilation, and elimination are easy activities of my body. As love and relationships, my relationships, personal or professional, always express harmony and vitality. All are exciting, stimulating, and meaningful because of always being present in the moment. Because of this, new ideas are constantly being revealed to me, prompting me to make the appropriate adjustments as needed, most especially when there is a need to focus on a healing situation. As prosperity, my consciousness is a prosperity consciousness. So I know abundance fills my life. I am entitled to opulent good. Spirit in me is that means for abundance and supply that are meant to be experienced, and I am grateful for this wisdom in me that knows this. As all forms of work endeavors, I appreciate that I reside in a field of causative, creative energy, and I attract to me productive people and circumstances. This means that my work, talents, and abilities are always recognized and accepted. I know there is nothing in me that can die except old thoughts. Nothing in me can deny my greater good in the past, the present, and the future. I've put to rest and released anything that could possibly be a challenge to this truth of my being. For my only surrender is to the mind of God. How glad I am for this awareness. I live in boundless gratitude to spirit for expressing through me, and I speak this word into the law of mine, and I know that it is indeed accepted. And in this joyful moment, I am most grateful simply to be me. For I have said yes to God. And God says yes right back to me. And so shall our word be that goeth forth from our mouths. It shall not return in any way void. It goeth forth to heal and bless and return to us multiplied and abundantly and to prosper in the thing whereto it is sent. As I give thanks, I say, and so it is. So two words came through me from Don's wonderful treatment. Well done. Well done. Beautiful. Beautiful treatment. So it is now my pleasure to welcome Catherine Holla. She's going to do our reading for us. Catherine, please welcome Catherine. Thank you, Don. Hi, everybody. I'm grateful to see all of you here today. And I'm grateful for you, Reverend 
Loretta, for everything that you've done for this community. So, I have a reading. It's from Amy Morin, and it's actually the seven scientifically proven benefits of gratitude. Gratitude may be one of the most overlooked tools that we have access to each and every day. Cultivating gratitude doesn't cost any money, and it certainly doesn't cost much time, but the benefits are enormous. Gratitude opens the door to more relationships. Whether you thank a stranger for holding the door or you send a quick thank you note to a coworker, acknowledging other people's contributions can lead to new opportunities and to new friendships. Gratitude improves physical health. Grateful people experience fewer aches and pains, and they report feeling healthier than other people. Gratitude improves psychological health. Gratitude reduces a multiple of toxic emotions, ranging from envy and resentment to frustration and regret. Gratitude effectively increases happiness and reduces depression. Gratitude enhances empathy and reduces aggression. People that are grateful experience more sensitivity and empathy toward other people and a decreased desire to seek revenge. Grateful people sleep better. Writing in a gratitude journal helps people sleep better. Just spend 15 minutes jot, jotting down a few grateful sentiments before bed and you will actually sleep better. Gratitude improves self-esteem. Rather than becoming resentful toward people who have more money or better jobs, which is a major factor in reduced self-esteem, grateful people are able to appreciate other people's accomplishments. And finally, gratitude increases mental strength. Gratitude not only reduces stress, but it may also play a major role in overcoming trauma. We all have the ability and opportunity to cultivate gratitude. Developing an attitude of gratitude is one of the simplest ways to improve your satisfaction with life. And so it is. Thank you, thank you, that was beautiful. Thank you so much, gratitude. I'm going to do a meditation for us now and then we'll have our announcements and we'll have some wonderful music from Yoichi. But before I start the meditation, I wanna share something with you that I received this week from Michel Pascal. He was with us, remember, several weeks ago. And he and our own Amanda, who comes here, Amanda Holly, she comes here every once in a while she was singing with uh, Michelle Pascal and also Michael Beckwith. And Michael Beckwith sent a message for everyone. And in the message, Reverend Michael Beckwith says, be grateful for nothing. I just thought I'd leave you with that before we do the meditation because what he's telling us is, when you have gratitude, regardless of what it's for, it's going to raise your frequency. So Court, would you do me a favor, please, and just turn those lights down. We're gonna do a little meditation, just a very brief one and then I know that we'll have our music and our lesson and so on. But I like doing meditations because they really refresh us and they give us a way to relax the body and the mind. So we're de-stressing right now, okay? So just take a deep breath in. And on the exhalation, relax, release, and let go. And just allow your body to just feel at one with this presence and this power. As we go through the body gently, to relax each part of the body. So bring your awareness now into your feet and relax your feet. Allow your feet to completely relax. And then bring your awareness into your legs, your calves, your knees, your thighs. Breathe into that and just allow your legs to release, relax, and let go. And then breathe into the trunk of your body, inhale, and on the exhalation, release, relax, and let go. Allow your body to relax. Bring the awareness into your fingertips, your fingers, your hands, 
your arms, your shoulders, and just allow your arms and shoulders to completely relax. Inhale, and on the exhalation, relax and take that deep extra breath and just let it out. Completely relax. And now bring your awareness into your neck and throat area and allow that area of your body to completely relax. Inhale, and on the exhalation, relax your throat. Feel your throat and neck completely relaxing. And then bring your awareness into your face, your eyes, your nose. Inhale. And on the exhalation, relax your face. Let go. And in this space of relaxation, allow yourself to just feel good, to just be in the moment, letting go of any concern, any appearances, anything at all. Let it all go. And just imagine that there's a box next to you, and it's a glowing box. And any fears or worries or concerns that you have, just see all of them going into that box. There's a light around the box, and it's dissolving. Any negation that you may have brought in here, any concern, let it all go. And now we're going to have a deepened relaxation through our breath. So I want you to inhale and just let it all out. Ha! <sighs> Relax. Let it go. And now mentally check your body, check your emotions, check your mind. And anywhere at all that you may feel some more tension in the body, inhale into that part. Inhale. And on the exhalation, release, relax and let go. Allow yourself to just be in the moment. And feel the gratitude. Gratitude for perfect health and well-being. Gratitude for the wonderful reading, for the beautiful spiritual mind treatment, for the gathering this morning where we are all fulfilled, for the beautiful talk, for the music of Yoichi, for friendship and support for all of the wonderful blessings that we are given. We see them now and we see them more clearly. And we know that when God is for us, there is nothing and no one that can be against us. And we are grateful and we say thank you. And so it is. And when you are ready, you can just kind of shake your hands, your fingers, your legs, shake your feet a little bit and bring the energy back and you can do this at home, it's very easy, and it just really takes the tension out. So when you're ready, just open your eyes and come back to the room. You can shake your hands a little bit, let go of the tension. Feeling better? Yes? It's a very wonderful exercise to do. I'll get to the announcements right now. The class continues after Shortcut to a Miracle. Maybe we'll start a little later today. We have so much food. Please eat the food, please. And uh, we also have our wonderful lesson today. And Barbara is doing the Wednesday night talk, which will start at 6.30 until 8.30. And that will be next week, right? Not this week. 28th. The 28th, yeah. This week, there is no class because of Thanksgiving, OK? And we'll put that up as an announcement also. But the following week, Barbara will be there for Open Your Mind to Receive for Lessons on Prosperity, which are wonderful, by the way. They really are. Yeah. So shortcut to a miracle afterwards, Barbara's class a week from Wednesday. And today we have a wonderful lesson from Fanny Munlin. And now we're going to have some amazing music from the one and only Yoichi. So, uh, well, this is actually the first time playing solo by myself after I came back from Japan. That was about two weeks, two weeks ago. And um, that was a great trip I had, and I'm so thankful. I taught many schools, and I usually teach a lot in Japan and teach college kids all over Japan, actually. I went to some other cities, not just in Tokyo. And I had a concert guest appearance with some 
big band in Tokyo, and those are, those guys are great. And then they played my tune as well, and I played it. I, I did a little, sh little show off, you know. <laughs> That's my job. So, <laughs> so anyway, so uh, the one announcement: I'm I'm performing again next Sunday on the 25th at a place called City Winery. It's down, uh, I think, Varick Varick Street. Derek, is that right? Yeah. Thank you. So I'll be there from, uh, uh, well, starting from 12.30, but we, I gonna, we, 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 we're going to be there until like 2 or so. So you can actually, you know, come and join us if you have time. That's a brunch. Thing. So, uh, enough said. Um, this morning I'd like to play something that, you know, kind of chill, you know, chill, chill, chilling. But anyway, uh, the selection I'm going to play is something called my one and only love. Hope you enjoy.
beautiful, the magic of Yoichi. I did forget one thing. Do you know what it is? We didn't wish each other a happy Sunday before I introduce my wonderful speaker. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Yeah. Here. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. That's our little good stuff. Happy Sunday. And now it is a pleasure to introduce to you our wonderful licensed practitioner who is going to be speaking today on gratitude to each and every one of you. Please help me welcome Fanny Nunley. Thank you, Reverend Loretta. Uh, it's good to be back. I, uh, last Sunday I was in Washington, D.C. attending a conference held by the National Council of Negro Women an organization that was founded by a woman whose parents were slaves. So we have come full circle. But today it is my pleasure to talk about gratitude. It is a spiritual gift that we all have. And how we use that gift determines the quality of our life. And many of us don't realize that all of us come here equipped to deal with all challenges. In my research, I read, I got a book by Wayne Dwyer who talks about spiritual healing. There is no problem that we face that cannot be solved through spiritual healing. And in it, he talks about gratitude, being grateful. Being grateful for the small things, being grateful for the confusion that we may experience, and the lessons learned. I'm going to talk about, I keep, this is my journal, my gratitude journal. It's a little worn, and I write in it every day. Sometimes I don't write every day, but I do write in it. And I was in the supermarket, and I saw this book, this magazine, how Gratitude Shifts Your Attitude by Oprah Winfrey. So I bought it. I said, oh my God, everybody is talking about gratitude. We are spreading the word of gratitude, and we should be very happy about that. But let's go into the details and work ourselves up into a vibration where we can sustain an attitude of gratitude. The one thing that I think we should all recognize, and I am very grateful for this teaching, religious science teaches us how to use this internal power, this God power that we have to create the kind of life that we'd like. It is a self-help project. And if we come short, and if we fall short, we should not be discouraged because life is forward movement, and then you may have to take a few steps backwards. But the steps backward is not a deterrent. It's a process of learning and gaining knowledge on how to move forward again, how to reconstruct, how to revitalize, re-energize yourself. One of the things that I like to do in my treatment for gratitude is to think about what it is that I am really seeking to get into my life, or what am I trying to change about myself. And then I think about who I am. First of all, I am a divine idea in the mind of God divinely created and sustained by this omnipotent, omni-action present. And once I come to that realization and acceptance, you see the intellect is always saying, no, you're not quite there, or you're not quite this, or you're not quite there. But the subconscious mind, if you give it that wonderful expression and acceptance of who you are, that mind produces the results that you are looking for. 
it is absolutely necessary to get good in your life by using the principle, the law. There is a law. It's a natural law of gratitude. Gratitude is a natural law. And using it daily brings you into harmony with spirit. And in harmony, you know, he, USG was playing. When things are off key, that harmony irritates. When you're out of harmony with spirit, you find yourself doubting, being afraid, being confused. The one thing that I have learned is that being thankful for the tiniest things, the things that we might not think is important, even the larger things that we sometimes, if we have great success, I am so thankful I got this great raise, I am making so much money, that's good. But you fall down on the street and bang your knee and you get up and you say, oh, damn it, I burned my knee. Well, thankful that you were able to get up. <laughs> Thank God I didn't break any bones or anything. Now, what have I learned from this? Well, the light is going to turn red and the light is going to turn green and so there is no point in rushing where am i going that i need to get there in such a hurry whatever i am going towards will be there when i get there it will be there when i get there because in your mind in my mind in all of our mind what we seek is seeking us no one can take it away. No one can move it. It is a fixed idea in the mind of God for me. And when I get there, it is my time to get it. So the rushing and the angst, I should let go and trust the spiritual power that I have within me. To Keep that vibration, because everything is energy. We are all solidified. We are all energy beings. This whole planet is constantly moving. Energy is moving in and out. And what we need to do is think about what it is we want. And how do we maximize this great potential for our best and good use? We maximize it by being still and listening to that small, still voice that we all have. You have an intuition that is 100% accurate all the time, every day, any hour. It is the voice of spirit in each one of us. We have it. But in the confusion, the noise, the hear, the one thing I have learned in my gratitude journey is to not talk about what it is I would like to do for myself. I do it. I will consult with my sister when I've gotten to a place where I know in my own consciousness I have accepted the idea. Because talking about it, I'm going to do this and I want to do that. I want to be an actress. And the first thing your friend will say, you have never, ever been to a theater. <laughs> How are you going to ever become an actress? You don't even know anything about it. You, you haven't surrounded yourself with people who are in the profession. And you are telling me you want to become an actress? Get real. So what you do is you go back and you say, wait, wait a minute. And then all of a sudden, this confusion and doubt and anxiety. Oh, I want to do this, but she said I can't. Talk to the spirit of God within you. Come to a place in your consciousness, in your internalness, into that spirit where God resides within you. And get that foundation, get that conviction. There is a power, 
there is a conviction that you will get that no matter what anyone says, you know that you can do whatever it is you want to do at that moment. You want to get a new car and you don't have any money and say so you can't get a new car, you have no credit, you have no this, you have... Do, think about what it is you want. Treat on it. Gratefulness gives you the ability to ground yourself in spirit, to anchor. You know, when you anchor something, nothing can move it. And once you get that spiritual anchor through gratitude and gratefulness, nothing can change it. I find I, I was in Washington, and we, we had a very good conference. And we had some people who were doubting, and I met a group of women who said, oh, we can't, da, da, da. I said, I got to get out of this group because I cannot function in this group because this group is going to go, and that's not where I am. So I said to them, I said, you have your ideas, and they are great, but my ideas are not on the same level, and I think I need to go to another group. And I went to another group. But see, being, but I am grateful for the experience that I had with these people because it taught me that complaining and being dissatisfied <clears throat> goes into me, and then I have to treat this out. I have to treat it out. There's nobody else to get it out. The doubt, the fear, the anxiety can have it, run havoc on your life. But you have the ability, the power to say, no, this is not what I want to experience. And I am grateful to spirit for the knowledge that I can make a choice and change my way of thinking. Strong gratitude. What do I mean by strong gratitude? I mean a strong faith in yourself, a strong faith in the Spirit of God. If your faith is strong, and gratitude leads to a strong, steady stream of commitment to Spirit, your own personal commitment. You hold steadfast to that. And there are words that we use. I try, I try not to use words that I am not ready, or I'm not fit, or I'm not this, I'm. The word I am is the most powerful word we can use to get anything spiritually to be grateful. I am grateful for life. I am grateful that I am here. I am grateful that I am present. The I am grateful moves you through challenges. If you want a new job, I am grateful that I am talented to do this particular type of work. It will come. The word we send out, you see, all that we say is vibration. This word vibrates out into the universe and to which that thing, until that thing that you send it to, it comes back to you. In the Bible, it says, watch and pray. For the years and years and years and years, I did not have a clue as to what that meant. I was thinking that it's to watch out there and see all the people and decide, but it means to watch my thinking. What do I think about constantly? We are thinkers, and we think into a substance, a thinking substance, that unto which we send that thought, that is the thing we're going to get. You cannot get any other result. If you're always pessimistic, always fearful, always confused, what do you get back? The same. So I try to watch my thought patterns, my use of words, and someone offers me something, I say, thank you. And we say we want to receive. Receiving and giving. Giving and receiving is the way of gratitude. You give and you receive. You must be a giver 
and be receptive to giving and receiving. It's not, I give, give, give. Oh, no, I don't want that. Anyone offers you something, you first thing say, oh, no, I can't take that. I, don't ha I, have, I have five of them already. I can't take it. Well, take it. Pass the one on. Pass two on. Then more will come to you. Thank you. F I have five, but thank you. I will pass it to my neighbor or my friend. Circular. This, you know, this is so incredibly this teaching is so incredibly beautiful in that it tells you about circulation. You, when circulation is going, it's like your body. If your body is not functioning, the circulation is off, you off. But circulation in life is good. You keep moving. Things keep moving. And life keeps changing. I am not saying that there are not challenges. I had a challenge with my back. I went to the doctor and I had a, I can't take a MRIs. I can do CAT scans. I did the CAT scan on my back because I have a spinal problem. And so what are my choices? So I asked the doctor, what are my choices? He said, well, we can do this and we can do that. I said, no, we're going to do a thing. So narrow this down so that I can get my treatment working going on this thing, you know. So I did my treatment, and he said, we'll have an epidural. And I said, yeah, I've had that before, and I did well, so I have it again. So when I did my treatment, and I was thankful for the guidance of spirit as to the way I should go for myself, I went that way. Today I am Walking around, I don't have the pain in my back as I had before. And this morning, I wrote in my journal. The day before yesterday, I wrote, I was grateful for the epidural. Today, I wrote, I was great, I'm grateful for the being free of pain. But what I'm saying to you is being grateful is a way of thinking. Being grateful is a way of acting. Feeling grateful that you are who you are. Not putting yourself down. Now, there are ways, and some of us should, should do it. I do it. I try to do it constantly. I try to smile. How, how many of you smile? <laughs> Come on, smile. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Smiling is good. Laughing is good. Being joy about the small things is good. You know, it doesn't cost any money at all. And this is a spiritual law that God has given us the ability to be grateful. We are going to be grateful this Thursday. Many of us are going to gather and be grateful. Be grateful for family and friends and food and shelter. That's good. But also be grateful that you are alive, that you are well, that you are present physically, mentally, and emotionally. Grateful for that. For that is the essence of the Spirit of God in each one of us. And when we let go and, and move out through the week and through this year, be grateful even for the confusion that we have going on in the universe. But because somewhere and somehow there will be a lesson. And any event that we go through, no matter what it is, there is a lesson learned. I have learned many lessons about myself being grateful. The one thing that I know that I am, I am controlling. I like to control things. That's true. But I've been in a situation where I had to let go of control. And this past year, I was in control of a conference that I had to let others do things, and I had to let go. I treated, and I treated, and then I got to the place where I could let go. Things were not going to fall apart if I wasn't there. 
the world was not going to stop spinning if I wasn't involved. And I was grateful. I wrote in my journal, I am grateful that I am getting to the place in my life, in my life, where I can let go. That is a wonderful place to be for me. I can't say for the world, but for me, it is a wonderful place to be. And judgmental. Being grateful that I am not judgmental. Someone, well, she's this or she's not that. I don't like this attitude. It's not, it's not her attitude that you have to worry about. It's your, how do you, you have to accept the person as they are. I accept my sister as she is. I do not try to change her in any way whatsoever because that's who she is. I love her for what she is. My brother, I have a brother in Charleston. I love him the way he is, my niece. Now, I was at that point where I was trying to manage everybody. And then I discovered that I could only manage myself. And through gratitude. See, grat what gratitude does, it changes the way you think, not the way anyone else thinks. It changes the way you think about everything. And then it brings you in harmony. It brings you in harmony with life. That you can see people as they are and appreciate them and not be upset or confused or angry. That is the beauty of gratitude. And if, and all the, the treatments today, the reading today, emphasizes the benefit of gratitude. The benefits of gratitude, peace and calmity, calm, calmness. Lower blood pressures, greater physical movement, financial security, health and wellness, the joy of living through gratitude. It is a wonderful practice. It is a practice that just requires a change in the way you think and the way you act or react to anything that happens in your life. I know that it is not an easy task to alter, but it is a task that's worth trying. It's a road that's worth traveling down to make sure that you enjoy and know that you are divinely supported, guided by infinite intelligence that is always available, always ready. And to be grateful for the divine spirit of God in each one of us. And I'd like to close this talk by reading uh, a gratitude prayer. My, my heart overflows with gratitude. In this moment, I center myself in the omnipresence of God, and I feel the rapture of its perfect peace, power, love, and lighting my being and filling my being with light. I am one with this awesome present, and it is in me. And I am radiant with the light of God. A sense of deep gratitude floods my heart and brims, brims it with thanksgiving and manifold blessings God lavish upon me. Every domain of my life is a divine beneficent. I move with ease from experience to experience, from good to greater good, and enriched by the prayer of my grateful heart. Everything in my heart desire flows through me, unending abundance, health, harmony, wisdom, prosperity, and joy blesses and enriches my world. I am grateful for my life, my family, my friends, my freedom, my financial security, and my country and the people who share the planet with this, in this special time. My heart overflows with gratitude at the recognition 
that I am now in heaven. And so it is. That was amazing, amazing. I love that talk about gratitude and being thankful and it's just amazing and our community is amazing. So give yourselves a round of applause also. Thank you, Fanny. That was a beautiful lesson. Really, really beautiful. Okay, so I got a lot from that. One of the things that I love that Fanny said was talking to God, you know, that we can talk to God. We believe that in our teaching. Talking to God gives us so many blessings. I'm just so grateful for today and the way our center is growing and the wonderful people that are coming to see us and to be a part of this. This is an amazing teaching, as Fanny said. It is really amazing. And I was thinking when she said about Thanksgiving with families, since I've been practicing gratitude, I have to tell you, my relationships are starting to improve. You know that I have challenges with certain people in my family. I'm not going into that. But I am looking forward this year to Thanksgiving. I really am. And, uh, just looking forward to the blessings of family and friends. So being grateful, regardless of what's going on. That was a beautiful message, Fanny. Thank you again. Much appreciation. Thank you. OK, so now we're going to have our off. Welcome up, Yoichi again. Yoichi?
Carter. I'd like to ask a question.